to the first review of 2020. And uh, this movie is the third time it's getting made. The original came out in 2002. The American remake came in 2004, directed by the person who did the 2002 version, which is in Japanese. This is released by someone else, and I know it's the first week of January, and we usually open with a horror movie. This movie really made me miss Insidious, The Last Key, and also last year's Escape Room. Alright, let's get this out of the way. I'm going to need that for this review. The Grudge. Okay, The Grudge is a story about a demon who, if you go into a house, will haunt you. That's it. This movie is a very non-linear movie as it takes place telling more or less the story of four different families. And this movie's very boring. Okay, let me get the setup out the way. This lady goes to visit, goes to Tokyo in 2004. She leaves and she starts seeing demons. She goes home. We flip to 2006, where our main character of the movie, a detective, uh, her real, the actress's name is. Andrea Reisenberg, if I got that name wrong, forgive me because I don't care. So she she's moving into a new town with her son. Her husband had just died about three months ago, I believe it was the timeline, of cancer. They didn't say what type, it doesn't matter. A lot of, along with a lot of things in this movie. She goes to the she meets her new partner by the name of Detective Goodman. They go to their first um, case and they find the body in a car rotting. So Andrea's character, detective, decides to go and um, see what happened. And she happens to go to this house. She sees none other than Lynn Shay, who he was in the Insidious movies and a lot of other ones, uh, is in horrible condition. She finds another dead body and then we go backwards from there. One of the hard things about this movie is it does take place in, with four different stories. You have the story of the person, the young lady who came back from Tokyo with the demon. You have the story of uh, John Cho is in this movie and criminally underused, along with his wife, who, Betty Gilpin, who most of us know her from uh, Glow. <clears throat> And they're another family who happens to go to that house to take care of the original. And then you have kind of not happening at the same time, but like a couple of weeks or months. The timeline is very a little bit confusing. With the current residents of the house, this um, this interracial couple who Lin Shay is the wife and then she has a husband who's African American. And then at the same time, you have the story of uh, the detective who is looking at everything going on and it it gets bogged down because there's so many stories going on and in, in only a 90 minute movie that you really don't care for many of the characters so it makes it really hard to like to watch the movie then all of a sudden there's this strange story about detective goodman's um a former partner detective moldone who is also finding out, hey, he also went in that house. What's going on? One of the major that's one of the major problems. There's too many stories going on. And it's told in a non-linear form, and that could be something very interesting, but there's not enough time with anyone that you care. And a lot of it is shot very boringly. The story takes forever to go on. Um for a horror movie, there's not a lot going on as far as scares. There are a couple of jump scares, but a lot of them are like, okay, I expect that to happen. Oh, he's putting his face in the water. I know it's going to happen. Um, a lot of it has been there, done that, no, nothing. There's only one good kill in the movie, 
and that happens really late in the movie, and it, it involves Lin Shay. Um, so the movie just feels like it's muddling about. It feels like they had this idea for at least three movies, and they had to crush them together just because. Um, unfortunately, the lead, Detective Mulduck, is very boring. She's very bland. Other than the fact that she has a son, who I'm not going to lie, halfway through the movie, until they showed him in like the last 20 minutes, I forgot she had a son. Because he, he disappears from the movie after more or less he's introduced. Um, the jump scares are weak, in all honesty. The ending is ridiculous just because of the facts that no one's paying attention to what's going on. Everyone's like, oh, destroy the house. There's a subplot, like I said, with the, uh, with Goodman's, uh, ex-partner who is, like, that could have been entertaining if it would have been focused, but there's no focus in this movie. Also, a huge complaint of mine is, the movie's called The Grudge. They admit that the demon is called The Grudge, but we have no idea who's The Grudge against. Because there's literally no time dedicated to the main villain. Like, it just shows up, and all we know is if you go into a house that it was in, I guess it follows you? But the rules of the universe are never really set up, so you're just sitting there going, uh. I know there was a guy next to me who apparently liked this movie, because when the movie was over and when the last shot was done, which was really stupid, and it does my number one rule of what stupid movies do, sequel bait you. When it's done, he started clapping, and the only thing I can do is as soon as I saw that the credits started rolling, I was like, crap! Uh, yeah, this really made, I hate, as much as I disliked the ending of Escape Room, at least that movie had good parts. Like, it really got to a, a point where, especially in the bar scene, I really liked it, and then it just fell off a cliff, more or less. And it, was, it wasn't a sharp cliff, it was, you know. And I kind of, I'm one of the people who actually like Insidious, The Last Key. I, it does have its problems, but it's way better Lin Shay movie than this one. Actually, she's probably the only entertaining person in this movie because she's so fucking batshit nuts in this movie. Um, if I have to rate um, uh, The Grudge, I'm going to give it a 1.8. It didn't offend me. It was just boring, bland, and stupid. Uh, hopefully that's not to say we have lots more things going for us, especially on the horror side coming up this year. We have Antlers, we have uh, the Invisible Band coming up, so hopefully we're going to get all the bad stuff out of the way. Hansel and Gretel looks pretty cool, so yeah, that's my review for The Grudge. Did you see it? Have you seen the other ones? Because I haven't. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll get to you apparently later this week with another review. Later.